So David, it's been a while since I last saw you in native Australia. Tell me how you end up in Germany. Well, um, you know, I, I was working at Sydney Opera House for uh, quite a while. Um, became a director of the Opera House, kind of looking after most things that moved there. Um, and that kind of came to a natural end, I guess, um, once they got the funding to kind of um, regenerate all the venues, which had been a big part of the work that I'd been doing for them. Time to take on um, something else. Um, I, I knew DMB, and I, I have been a, a user and a, and a fan of DMB um, ever since we put the J Series system into the concert hall. It really transformed the concert hall business, and we were engaged in a dialogue really about, I suppose, venues and the way venues were working and why a venue like an opera house would have a J Series ring mm. and what that meant. And um, I'd done a presentation to the DMB Global family, um, so yeah. So once I left, um, DMB asked me if I'd be interested in a deeper engagement. Um, I initially joined the advisory board, but then the position of chief marketing officer globally yeah. came up, and um, they said, "What about it?" And I'm a fool for a challenge, so uh, I said yes. <laughs> here we are. How long ago was that now? I've been here at headquarters uh, almost four months. Mm. Yeah. And you settled into German lifestyle, German cuisine, and uh, yeah, no, it's. Yourself. I won't say it's been easy, but it has been brilliant. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like, it's like drinking from the proverbial um, fire hydrant mm. um, on every level. So moving a, moving a family here has got a whole personal level of emotion to it. Um, leaving loved ones at home has got emotion to it. Joining a new company um, is, isn't easy for anybody anywhere. Yeah. And then having to then join a new country um, just added a whole another level of complexity. But we wanted a challenge and we wanted the opportunity to engage with another culture and do something with a company that um, I've got a lot of respect for and that do great work. Um, that, that kind of ticked all the boxes for me. As you said before, you'd worked as an end user for many years uh, using DMB product in the Opera House. You had a good impression of the company and the brand. The reality is something different or is it an extension of what you felt as an end user? Uh, it's an extension and it's much, more, it's much deeper and much more nuanced than, mm. than I realised. Um, the company, the brand, so brand being the values of the company, um, the ethos of the company, its vision um, and its products coming together, what does that mean? Um, the values of the company and the working ethos, uh, system reality uh, and how every person that works in DMB is a part of manufacturing uh, an excellent sound experience for the user is something that I'm still um, learning about um, and then, you know, like I say, the very subtle nuances of what is D&B and what isn't D&B, which uh, I really love. And I love challenging them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know a stranger to working in Europe before, I remember your time when you worked at Euphonics uh, from London and you say you worked in France before, so Germany is, you know, uh, an extension of those two territories who were before. Tell me, here at DMB, it's not just a sound company here anymore, not just a loudspeaker company. Uh, there's immersive audio in the background now that's coming more into play. How are DMB and how are you getting involved with immersive audio here at DMB? Look, I guess for a start, we, we probably shy away from the term immersive. To me, immersive would be like being dropped into that glass of water. Um, we probably have um, an approach where... Uh, it's more adequate, adequately described as truth and beauty. Mm. Um, truth in that um, the performance um, that is taking place, or the presentation that is taking place, is presented in such a way that uh, every listener in that, um, or in that audience um, feels much more deeply connected um, to the audio because it matches the, it matches what we are seeing. So there's a kind of a truthful imaging of for the audience, but also from what the artist is trying to project. And beauty in that we can then take that and um, evolve it to a whole another level with a creative overlay, but also um, to create the perfect environment for that performance to take place. Talking about venues, I mean, obviously they don't come much bigger than the Opera House where you were for the best part of well, your work in life. Uh, you clearly see the future of venues and flexibility and maximising use and profitability for a venue. 
What are the challenges you think in the next five, ten years for venue operators of such a scale? Well, it's about their business model um, and how they can match the user experience that the new generations mm. uh, of customers but also artists mm. want. They don't want this um, um, kind of classical, here it is, you listen, I play, you know, it's much more uh, uh, engaged on multi-dimensions mm. um, than just, you know, you're the audience, I I'm the artist. Um, I think it's about the whole experience of when the audience um, or the customer first thinks about visiting the venue and what that feels like from an online or a virtual uh, perspective, what happens uh, in terms of having something to eat or drink or purchase merchandise, sit in your seat but also the journey home and what happens in the discussion afterwards about um, the performance and what people have seen. So. The challenge for them is really in being able to program and strike a nice balance between the identity of their venue, because I think venues should have an, I an identity. I mean, yeah. if, if we just built this ultimately multi-purpose venue, it would be some kind of a, a high-class shed, yeah. you know, which yeah. it shouldn't be. It should, it should have a personality, but within that, you can set up this uh, incredible conversation between the art form and the venue. So having um, The Cure or Janet Jackson or... Um, whoever play at the Opera House yeah. was a kind of uh, a really lovely thing for the artists in that they felt there was this kind of opera versus contemporary yeah. conversation going on between the architecture and their art and it just kind of adds to the whole experience. Tell me what's the next for yourself here at DMV? Next, well we've got a pretty busy agenda, um, <laughs> got some interesting things coming down the pipeline, I can't say everything no. uh, right here and now. We've been very busy demonstrating uh, demonstrating the DNB Soundscape, mm -hmm. um, which is our, our product for taking uh, the way audio is presented yeah. and performed um, into a level that I think actually isn't the next dimension. It's actually the dimension that our customers and our artists expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think you know, audio is beginning to have a, co a, a, a seat in a conversation at the start of uh, the creation of product rather than being um, kind of consider at the end okay, that, that it's just a, a function that happens. It's going to be part of enabling creativity to happen on a whole whole different plane. And that excites me. I want to be part of that. But also um, for the brand of DMB, um, really help find all these um, bits around here that I that I love yeah. and um, uh, help the company take that to the next level. Um, one example that we are now using. When I first arrived, I found a little diagram. Um, there were two guys, one in product management, one in the um, research area. Yeah. They were trying to explain to each other about what they did. So one of them wrote art in the middle of where the audience stood, and one of them wrote noise on the outside. In the, we were trying to make more art happen for the uh, audience here, and less noise happen for the peripheries and the, uh, <laughs> and the environmental mm, impact here. True. So that's now turned into this, this kind of authentic little piece of something that was created by workers here. It's now turned into a, a brand for our next era of campaign, of product campaigns, which is uh, more art, less noise. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, good. What do you miss most about Australia? Well, someone put a picture of Bronte Pool up on the uh, Facebook the other day, and that did make me say, could you stop that, <laughs> please? I really like Bronte Pool. Yeah, no, I miss Bronte Pool. You do? Okay. Interesting answer. <laughs> <laughs>